In this lesson, we'll take a look at character animation, including model rigging systems and animator controllers. Let's get started. In my Unity project, I've added a character model to my scene, and I've called her Robot Carol. Now, Robot Carol is a free character model that I was able to download and import from the Unity Asset Store. You can use character models that other individuals have created uh, from different places on the web in your projects. However, you want to make sure that your character model comes with its own rigging system if you plan on using any type of animations. In your project, if you want your character to run or jump and actually make those movements as part of an animation while your player is moving the character around the screen, you'll need to make sure that you have a rigging system in place in order to add those animations. Let's take a deeper look at the Robot Carol character model that I have in my project. It did not come with its own animations, so I had to download animation files from another free package that I also got from the Unity Asset Store. And that's okay, as long as there's a rigging system in place. So I'm going to open up my model folder, and we're going to take a deeper look at the Robot Carol model. This might also be a prefab in here as well. But I have a model here for Robot Carol, and I also have uh, her rigging system here, and I also have the mesh as well. This last item is an avatar file, and the avatar definition might come with your model, or it may be something that you have to generate yourself. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Let's go back to our model file. And you can collapse these at any time. If you don't see these automatically, just expand it and you can see all the additional items within your model file. And in the inspector window, we now see that we have these different tabs, model, rig, animation, and materials. Under the model tab, we have all different types of settings for mesh configurations, rendering configurations. We're not going to take a look at any of those in this video. We're going to take a look primarily at the Rig tab. Now under the Rig tab, we have an animation type. This animation type is going to be a humanoid. You have other types that you can apply, but for most two-legged upright character models, you're going to use a humanoid animation type. Then for that avatar definition file that we have here at the end of our model, if you don't have one, you can create one from this model. And then you'll also want to apply a standard four bones uh, skeletal structure for the skin weights. And I'm going to select the apply button. And if you don't have that avatar definition file, now is when it will, will apply that file to your model. Let's take a look by selecting the configure button at that rigging system. When I select configure, it may prompt you to apply the import settings once again. And now we can take a look at the rigging system itself. Over here in our hierarchy, you can see all of the different skeletal structures that are involved in the rigging system. As I said before, this can be a time intensive process setting up the entire rigging system. So you'll wanna make sure that your character model comes with one already. You can see the skeletal structure here in our view of the rigging system. You can also get a breakdown of all of the different transforms that the different vertices or joints um, can be applied to different animations in the rigging system itself. We can take a look closer at the head, the hands, but primarily the animations are going to rely on the body rigging system in order to make it jump or look like it's running across the screen. So we know that we have a rigging system set up and in place with this model just by looking at the rigging system here. To exit this view, scroll down and we select done. Now that we know we have a rigging system in place, we can also check to see if there are any animations. There are no animations tied with this model. It didn't come with any when I imported it from the Unity Asset Store. So what I had to do was add some animation files from another package that I also downloaded from the Unity Asset Store for free. You can find basic free motion animations that come as an asset package on the Asset Store and other locations on the web.
I have three very basic animations here. You can see that inside each animation file, we have some directions as to how Unity should use the rigging system in order to move our model. You can select each of the animation files and click the animation tab, and then take a look at a preview of that model using the animation. So here in idle, it's just standing there, sort of making a, a, a sort of um, small movements, very subtle in an idle type movement. Then we have our jump pose, and this is strictly just a jump pose. And then the run motion, which is also an animation file that we can apply. These are three very basic and common gaming animations that we're going to use to make our robot look like she's running. Now, the one thing that our Robot Carol game object does not have is an animator controller. It's missing that right now. You can see that in the animator component. It's also missing the avatar, which we just created. So I can add our Robot Carol avatar by selecting it here. Now, the game object that I already added to the scene for Robot Carol already has the animator. I added the rigid body so we can apply physics and gravity to the character. I also added the character controller so we can apply collisions and movements to it. And I also have already added the player control script, which also uses the animator controller, which we have not created yet. I've also added the character controller to our script component here as well. So that's already in place. Let's create that animator controller that will actually tell the script which animation files to run when certain actions are performed. To do that, I'm going to leave the animations folder open. I like to keep my animator controller file with all of my animation files. So I'm going to right click in that folder, select create, and then animator controller. This will add my animator controller here at the bottom. And I'm going to call it Robot Carol since this is her animator controller. And we're going to open up that animator controller and we'll start to see what looks like some sort of graph or flowchart. The animator controller is actually a, a flowchart of events. And it tells the Unity system when a script is performed what animations to do and when. These have to be tied directly to the script that you're using to control your character model. So we'll have to be very careful when we set some of these animator controller components up. So the first animation I want to take care of is the idle animation. So upon entry of the game itself, when the game begins, I want my character to stand still. So Robot Carol is just going to stand there and idly move those subtle movements. Then I also want her to run when the player presses the up arrow uh, or maybe the W button. So I want her to run as well. And I also want her to jump when that command is pressed on the keyboard and the player wants her to jump. So those are my different animations that I want to have happen. Now I need to decide what parameters or events are going to cause those to happen. And then your animation will transition from one of these animations to another. So let's set up the transitions first. We could have Robot Carol go from an idle position to start running. We could also have Robot Carol stop running and go back to an idle position. I'm adding these transitions by right clicking on each animation. So I right click on the animation, select make transition, and then drag it to the other animation file that I want to have happen. So we can do the same thing with idle going up to jump. And also when she stops jumping, we may want her to return back to an idle state. Now she could also jump while she's running. So that could also be a transition. She, should, she could be running and then she jumps into the air. And then when she stops jumping, maybe we want her to return back to a running state again. These are all different types of states and transitions that could happen with our animations as the player is controlling the character model with the player control script. Now let's take a deeper look at each of these transitions. So an idle state to a run state. We need to set up a parameter that is tied to the script file that will change the animation from an idle state to a running state. 
Now, these are case sensitive. We're gonna add these parameters over here. And for our script to work, we're gonna use a Boolean. And this is um, used uh, to trigger whether or not the running is true or false or the jumping is true and false. You could also have an integer or a float or another type of trigger variable, but we use Boolean variables within our script. And so that's how we need to set up our parameters as well. So I'm gonna add a new Boolean parameter. And again, these are case sensitive. So I need to set up a jump parameter with a capital J, and I also need to set up a Boolean parameter for run forward. And those need to be typed exactly as that in order for our script to work. Now, when we transition from an idle animation state to a run state, in order for that to happen, run forward has to equal true. In order for it to stop running and return back to an idle state, run needs to equal false. So run forward equals false. Same thing for jump. In order for it to go from an idle state to a jump state, we need to have our parameter from jump be true. In order for it to return back to an idle state, we need to have our parameter jump be false. Now let's take a look at run to jump. This is a little bit different. So if she's running and she jumps, jump has to be true in order for that to happen. Now, if she's jumping, but she's also running and we want her to return to a run state, we can say that jump is false, but also running has to equal true. So run forward equals true. So we need two conditions in order for her to return back from jump to run. Same thing from run to jump, we could also say that uh, running ha run forward has to equal true, and then jump has to also equal true. Then from jump to idle, if we want to make those uh, parameters a little more specific, we can change those conditions to be jump has to equal false, but also run forward also has to equal false. Because remember, if run forward is true and jump is false, it's going to return back to a running state, not to an idle state. Now that we have our animation set up, let's go ahead and apply that to our script. Going back to the Robot Carol game object, we'll need to go to the animator controller, add our new animator controller called Robot Carol, and do the same thing for our script as well. The animator controller, which is abbreviated as anim for our script component, we need to add Robot Carol. All right, everything else in the script component looks good. We're using the player one controls, which are the arrows and the space key for jumping. Free rotation is set up, and we also have a rotation speed of 200. So now let's go ahead and play this and test it in our play mode. So now we can see that Robot Carol is idling, and she can rotate. She does run, but there is a bit of a problem here. Her running animation is delayed just a tad. So we'll need to fix something in our animator controller in order to not have that delay. Let's go back to the animator controller and take a look at this. On each of these transitions, you'll see that there is a has as exit time. The default for this is to have the exit time be checked. We want to make sure that these are unchecked. So we're going to deselect each one of these has exit times. Basically, this adds that delay to the transitions. So for each transition, we need to make sure that we uncheck has exit time because we want the animation to start right away. We don't want it there to be any delay in our transitions. So I'm going to uncheck each one of those. And then now let's go ahead and test it out again in play mode. Now we see Robot Carol. She's idling. I can turn her this way. I can run her. And now we see that when she runs, She's actually running when she should be running. There's no delay there with that animation. So also, when she's running, we can have her jump. She could also be standing still and jump. So it looks like all of our animations are working as they should be. And Robot Carol is free to move around in this space. Now it's your turn to practice setting up animator controllers that will interact with our player controls script.